Hey there, Shubi Doodlers. How are you doing? Well, um, first of all, I would like to say thank you to everyone who has sent me well wishes following my last video uh, in which I explain where I had been for the last three months following a bit of an accident that I had, uh, which kind of made me sort of stop and um, re reflect on things. And um, so thank you very, very much. I put the video up thinking, oh, well, you know, everyone's forgotten me. And I was sort of quite, quite surprised by how quickly a lot of people watched it and uh, was very, very touched by all your wonderful comments and uh, well wishes. So thank you. Thank you, all of you. Um, I, I'm most grateful to you all. I said in the video that I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this channel. And uh, many of you said, don't worry, just just do something. And uh, many of you said you like my kind of advice videos and uh, the ones where I chat. One person said, uh, I really like the one where you're talking to the ravens in the forest. Um, and so uh, I'm not quite in the mood to do drawing videos on here. Um, maybe I will again one day, but at the moment I'm not. Um, so I'll just chat for the moment and just keep things ticking over on this channel. Um, but if you've got things, ideas that you'd like me to chat about rather than draw, then um, let me know in the comments box below. I said in the previous video, I've hardly touched my watercolours since uh, I had my accident. And uh, I, I was thinking about that. And, and I think one of the reasons is sort of about two weeks after the accident, I um, booked in to do a, a, a sort of a one week online course, um, which was all about uh, JMW Turner, the... Uh, British landscape watercolour painter of the 19th century, <laughs> for whom I, I have a greater admiration. And in preparation, I bought myself some new watercolour brushes, new watercolour paints, <laughs> and a big palette, big plastic palette. And um, and then once I sort of, really sort of spent this week thinking about, learning about sort of the life of um, Turner as well, um, it, it, I kind of felt... Oh, I, I I didn't think I can do this. I tried painting a few clouds and things, which are the things I really love about Turner. And um, and I thought, he, you know, he, he started when he was <laughs> a babe in arms. <laughs> he just sort of drew and it was he was a, sort of a maniac about drawing and painting. And, um, you know, even his contemporaries were amazed by how hard he worked and when he would go on tour in Europe then other artists would go out and they'd kind of do a bit of painting here and there and then they go back to the hotel and have supper and you know and sort of loll about and chat and sort of promenade around the town whereas he would be in and out have something to eat and he was off painting sunsets and they were all aghast at how hard he worked and in my kind of period of recuperation I was thinking about this and thought I haven't I haven't got the time to um, really sort of achieve that kind of quality of work. Um, and I think he had a very different vision uh, to that which I have. Um, and and so I'm, I'm not going to be able to do that kind of thing. And I thought, is, uh, am I going to put all that energy in, into trying to do something like that? Um, in which there will probably be a lot of heartbreak because it's not go I'm not going to achieve what I want to do and and imagine I could do in in a reasonable length of time um, when there are so many other things to do. Um, where do I spend my time? Uh, I am of an age <laughs> where my contemporaries are retiring around me it's really weird i think what are they all going to do with themselves and uh, indeed mrs rayner is retiring from um, working at the hospital in a and e uh, in the accident department uh, emergency department in two weeks time so this is kind of a, a moment of change also in the reign of family and it makes me think i have had a pretty full career uh, <laughs> in doing what i do and uh, but I'm can't I could never imagine retiring before and I can't imagine retiring now. But um, but I, 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 you know, I will carry on doing whatever I do. But in this kind of period of sort of slightly forced sort of <laughs> calming down and thinking about things, 
I thought, well, what, what do I want to achieve? And what about what about this YouTube thing? And my patrons on Patreon will know. And and as they say on podcasts and stuff like that, it's only because of you supporting me on Patreon, etc., that I can continue doing these sort of things. So come and join me on Patreon. My patrons will know because I sort of sometimes open my heart to them that I have been torn over the last sort of four or five years as to what to do because I'm children's also this this youtube channel i've got the draw stuff real easy channel i've got patreon you know this that's got kind of four different audiences and it's really difficult each one is almost a full-time job and quite exhausting so things some things have to go by the wayside because i just don't have the time and it's a weird weird thing um, about the older you get <laughs> the faster time goes by and the less you seem to be able to get done um <laughs> it's it's uh, you know i'm i'm sure einstein has, you know i'm sure einstein's theory of relativity has an awful lot to do with it and and even just 10 years ago uh, i remember i could come in here and make videos all day long and the day seemed to stretch out and i could get so much done uh, and yet I do remember 10 years ago thinking, oh, I can only get this much done. And I remember, you know, when I was younger, the days stretched out. <laughs> and so time does seem to contract. And I suppose that makes you kind of think, uh, I want to make the most of time. And so I have decided that what I really want to do is, and I have this 10 year plan, the next thing I want, what I want to do is to sort of build draw stuff real easy because that is where my sort of real heart was when I started this whole drawing video thing um, is, is to sort of show people how to draw things um, and and it, it's to, to encourage people at the beginning because I know everybody then has a different style and a different kind of thing that they want to do and there are so many other teachers online teaching how to do all different styles and things it's the essentials of drawing and the motivation to keep you going that's going to sort of give you that grounding to then build a style on top and that's what I want to do and I want to do that through um, draw stuff real easy and make drawing books and videos uh, and I've kind of worked out sort of how long it takes to write a book and I'm, I'm doing how to draw Halloween stuff real easy at the moment and the book should be ready early September and uh, like oh, yes early September and and so then I'll release the book and I'll release a load of Halloween videos which I'm recording at the moment as I'm doing the book and um so I'll re release a load of those and each video will then kind of promote the book in a sort of virtuous circle um and then um uh, and then my theory is <laughs> that's what i'm going to do that's my plan for 10 years uh and then in 10 years time i can sort of sit and look at it and think what have i got here what do i do with it and you know do do i sort of <laughs> let somebody else run it I, I don't know what i don't know but uh that's not my problem now i've put that 10 years down the line I can sort of think about that then, and uh, you, as my audience, sort of may even sort of sort of push me in one direction or another for what happens then. I, who knows? It's a journey, as they say. I listen to a lot of books on Audible uh, while I'm pottering about in the garden or sort of building, <laughs> mixing concrete or whatever. I don't know. Uh, while I'm shaving in the morning, and uh, and at the moment I'm listening to a book. It's the it's the autobiography of Anthony Trollope, who was a novelist, an English novelist in the uh, 19th century. And he wrote about vicars and things like that and, and sort of small town love affairs and things like that. I've never read Trollope. I've seen a few sort of adaptations on TV. And, you know. But I read an article in the author magazine, which is from the Society of Authors, which I belong to. And... Uh, by Max Hastings, who's a military historian, and he wrote an article about about being an author and making a living as an author. And he said, you know, oh, you know, you should go back and listen to, to, to what Trollope had to say about being an author. And it's fascinating. Uh, there's a load of stuff in the book about, about his work, which I, I don't understand, or about the times he lived in, I don't understand. But a lot of stuff, which is absolutely fascinating. He worked in the post office, 
um, as a clerk. He started as a clerk and sort of worked his way up over the years. Sounds like he was a bit of a reprobate when he started. <laughs> but he, he has a lot to say about the, about being an author, and um, it, which I think sort of works with sort of being a creative type, whatever, really. Uh, and he says, you know, sort of giving, giving advice to young aspiring authors. Uh, don't do it. <laughs> it's, it's what he says. Don't even think about it. If you want to earn a living, um, if you think you're going to earn a living as an author, then don't do it. Uh, because you're not going to earn a living straight away. And so you're going to live in penury and that's not going to work out. Um, and that it, you're going to have to have a day job and sort of work two jobs, essentially, um, and and that kind of really um, sort of chimes with me. But although I was really lucky, I think when I left school, I, I did all sorts of creative jobs in printing and sign writing, things like that. But I was always, always kind of, you know, on the side, <laughs> doing stuff, doing creative, my own creative stuff on the side. But, uh, but I was really, really lucky when I finally decided this is what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm really knuckled down to it. Uh, in that uh, I, I lived with my mum at the time, so she kind of was supporting me. I didn't have to pay rent. And um, we had the dole back in those days in this country, which acted as a sort of creative um, financial <laughs> sort of <laughs> thing. And so many people back in the 70s and 80s, early 80s really, um, got their start because... Uh, there was a lot of unemployment, mind you. Uh, got their start because you could just about live in a bedsit. I certainly could live at home um, and sign on the dole. And you weren't required to go and do any work or even search for work or anything. They just had to go and sign on every two weeks, which gave you two weeks to sort of get on and and, and draw and practice and do whatever it was you were going to do. And when I, I just found myself at home in a right old state, um, and I had to kind of build myself up again. And luckily the doll was there. Luckily my mother was there. And uh, But I really knuckled down and, and committed to what I was going to do. And uh, and, and finally I got my first royalty check. <laughs> and it kind of started from there. So I quite understand what he was saying. And I'm, and the, and, uh, but, you know, in those days there were no kind of safety nets at all. Um, and and he himself said he he came from a family that had sort of connections in publishing as well, which all sort of helped. His mother wrote books as well, so that helped him too. But the other thing that chimed with me was he was saying about, about uh, it, it is a job to be aspired to, and I think being a, a, a creative, if you are a creative person, I think you know you you kind of want to be doing what I'm doing and and I think that's one of the reasons I, I sort of really chose to do it was I used to find it really difficult getting to work on time <laughs> and I was always late uh, and so I'd sort of I'd always got to try and stay late and work hard you know to, to make up for it but uh, but I just couldn't get up in the mornings and so I need a job where I don't have to get up in the morning and and that's basically what I got and that's what Anthony Trollope says the the wonderful thing about being an author is you are your own boss and you you you, you are your own king and you can decide when you're going to work but you have to actually do the work that's the thing but he says you know if you wake up at five and I do myself sometimes and you think yeah let's I'm awake you can come and work and there's no one to disturb you. There are a lot of interruptions and distractions if you work from home. <laughs> but uh, but you kind of have to learn to say, right, oh, I've got half an hour now. I can just go in and do a bit now and do a bit here and do a bit there. And, and eventually people kind of learn, you know, the mornings are yours or whatever. And, you know, when you're in the studio, they leave you alone. And, and, and this is really important. There's this little room I have that... Um, you know, when I close the door, everything is there ready as I left it when I come in in the morning. Or, or later on, I could just pick up and carry on from where I was. And Trollope says, you know, but, you know, even even the High Court judge has to be there at 10 o'clock, sitting in his chair. 
And even the Prime Minister on a Wednesday at Prime Minister's Question Time has to be there at 10 o'clock, sat on the front bench. And even an actor has to be there on the stage at 8 o'clock as the curtain rises. But not the author. The author can write anywhere they like, on the train, on a boat, <laughs> in the restaurant, <laughs> at home, in bed. And I have often... <laughs> taking a sketchbook with me to bed and I'm feeling particularly in February when it's cold and dark and grey and I get in the afternoon oh, and I'll go snuggle down in my bed in the afternoon with a cup of tea and my sketchbook and I'll start those uh, maybe I'll fall asleep for 10 minutes and then I wake up then I can start working again I've written quite a few things <laughs> in bed I've written quite a few picture books in bed interestingly and uh, and the other thing I've been listening to is the Hilary Mantel Wolf Hall trilogy which I have just finished listening to I it's it's so long I don't think I would have read it um and I know I would have found that I think I think if I'd have started reading it I would maybe not have continued because the language is quite tricky because it's all kind of written inside the head of Thomas Cromwell who was King Henry VIII's right hand man and so it's all full of politics and psychology there's so much psychology in there and um, he was a he was a, a street urchin basically in London uh, his dad was a bully blacksmith who um, mistreated him and he ran away eventually when he was a teenager and he went all around Europe. He sort of fought as a mercenary um, for various different countries, whoever was paying. And then he ended up in Italy as a, he knocked on the back door <laughs> after a battle. He said it was all bloody and whatever. Knocked on the back door, said, can I come and work in the kitchens for some food? And so he started in the kitchens and then they noticed, you know, he had qualities and eventually he was it was a banking family and he was brought into the counting house so he learned the trade of banking and whatever and you know started to become rich and eventually came home and uh, and eventually became you know the the, the the chancellor of britain and was you know the top man the number 2 in the country before a tragic end and his his end is almost designed by himself uh, and he, as he, as you go through, you see how he he plots and schemes and does this and that, all for the king. He's just so loyal to the king, and he's doing it for the king. And eventually, others think, "Oh, that's how you do it, and this is how we'll get rid of him." <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, the end was really quite tragic. Um, and there was one quote in there that I actually wrote down. It said, "Go forward," is the one direction in which God approves. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing. It's just keep going forward. Don't go back. You know, whether you believe in God or the universe or whatever, it's all creating. It's all about creativity and it's all about moving forwards. And you can maybe take things from the past and put the two things together but and create something new. But to go back and churn over old stuff, I think is probably not the way to go. Um, and little bits of what I'm doing with Draw Stuff Real Easy. I'm kind of going back and churning over, but uh, I'm sort of building, uh, uh, I'm building a base, I'm building the whole thing. Um, so, so sort of bringing a kind of unity to it, uh, which is what I've been lacking these last few years. So, so I'm feeling quite positive um, in that I have a, a direction in which I'm going forward. And uh, and I've cut out quite a lot of stuff, but that's the really difficult bit, is not to allow it to creep back in again. Uh, and that, I think, has been uh, a, a great fading of mine in the past. Um, because it's not a failing, I don't suppose, but it, it's, <laughs> I think it's being a creative person. You can, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. I'll have a go at that. I'll have a go at that. Um, whereas those who are really successful <laughs> just stick to one thing. <laughs> and uh, if I got one piece of advice to give today, stick to one thing. Um, so there we go. Um, if you've got ideas that you'd like me to talk about or sort of questions you'd like me to answer in 
talking videos that's all I'm going to be doing for the moment then uh, put them in the comments box below thanks for watching and keep coming back and uh and in the meantime keep drawing 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 oh make sure you're subscribed all that stuff uh, and in the meantime <laughs> keep drawing 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 practice 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 and i'll see you next time you take care now bye bye